Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I trust that you had a wonderful Easter weekend, whatever it looked like. I heard lots of uh, comments uh, about Easter being somewhat different this year, comments even saying Easter was muted. But in many ways, for us who follow Christ Jesus, it's been the same as it is every year as we seek to understand and work out what the resurrection and the truth of the resurrection looks like in our lives, wherever we find ourselves. And so I trust that you have experienced Christ's resurrection anew uh, this year. Let me welcome you to chapel. Uh, I hope you had a, a wonderful week off and enjoyed some kind of rest, whatever that looked like, or perhaps you've had enough of being in the house and uh, being involved in Zoom classes and online classes and online worship uh, as your idea of a rest. Now, welcome. We've been looking forward to gathering once again like this in worship. And we're going to begin by singing together. Uh, Milan and Fred are going to come and lead us in a song. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Fred and Milan. We're going to come to a time of prayer together now. And and let me remind you as we do come to a time of prayer that if you have any prayer requests or if you or your family during this time uh, need prayer, uh, perhaps someone in our community or someone connected to our community have been directly affected by what's going on in the world right now. I'm aware of at least two people who have lost immediate loved ones Um, to COVID-19 and we want to remember folks like that in our prayers together so if you do need prayer or you would like um, to to let us know about a situation that you need prayer for then please email chaplaincy and we'll pray for you as we gather together in our our chapel worship but as we come to prayer today uh, we've been I've been encouraging us as a community uh, in our own personal prayer time to be utilising an app, it's uh, by 24-7 Prayer, an organisation headed up by Pete Gregg. The app's called Lectio 365 and it just um, outlines a, a lovely little prayer service for you every day. And, and us who have been living together in Hullet, we've been going through it together. And we hope that others have too because there's something about praying those same prayers, reading those same scriptures that unites us 
in spirit. And so I'm going to use some of the scriptures and some of the prayers that we were led in today from Lectio 365. I'm going to read from John chapter 20, a couple of verses from verse 18. This is, of course, part of the resurrection story. And it says this. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the, the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Let's come to a time of prayer together. I'm just going to leave uh, some pauses in between for us to pray. It's strange reflecting on this passage where we find ourselves in lockdown. We are staying at home behind locked doors, not to hide like the disciples, but to protect ourselves and protect others from the spread of COVID-19. Fear itself can sometimes feel like a locked room that's hard to mentally or emotionally escape from. What fears are containing us at present? Jesus, we ask you to break into the place of your fears and bring your peace. The disciples had doubts of Mary's story. However, the presence of Jesus made the incomprehensible undeniable. Who do we know that's struggling and has questions about faith and questions about Jesus? Lord, we ask you to meet with them in an undeniable way today. And Lord, for anyone else who knows, needs to know the reality of those words from Jesus, peace be with you. We pray that you would be close to them, particularly those who grieve, particularly those who have loved ones dear to them who are sick. We pray for all his family today. We pray for Sarah Whittle's family today. And others, Lord, we just name them before you that need to know your peace in the midst of fear, in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of grief. Peace be with you. Let me close this prayer time by reading some words from Psalm 145. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy 
but your righteousness. Amen. Amen. Now before Tim comes and brings us today's reflection, we're going to have a couple of Bible readings. So I'm going to ask Maddie to come up first and read to us, and then after Maddie, Finley's going to come. A couple of Bible readings. Thanks, Maddie. This reading comes from Luke 24, verses 1 to 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to the sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who had told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to be an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. 53 to 58. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, as your sting. The sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be stead, steadfast, immovable, always excelling in your work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labour is not in vain. Just want to invite Tim up, folks. Um, for those of you who don't know, perhaps I know that some guests join us during our time of chapel worship. This is Tim Geddes, uh, uh, one of our first year theology students. Uh, he lives in Hullet, um, as it's obviously the Hullet students who have been looking after chapel. Uh, we live together as one household, hence the kind of lack of social distancing here. But, um, but that does allow me to, to pray for you and lay hands on you, Tim. So let me just pray for you. Um, as you prepare your heart to bring today's reflection. Father, I thank you for Tim, and I thank you for his love for you. I pray that you would fill him all the more with that love in these moments. I pray that he would simply be a channel, a channel of your truth, a channel of your grace, a channel of your love, Lord God. Speak to him. Speak through him. And I pray that he too would know that peace that might just calm any nerves in these moments. That he would know that he is among friends who love him. Peace be with you, Tim. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So as Mick said, I'm Tim and I live in Hurley. And one of the things that's been noticed in Hurley is how much sweet potato I eat. It's a bit of a problem most days. And... uh, There's a few reasons for that. One, because they're nice and they're easy to cook, but mainly because of a mistake that I learned from a few years ago. So with sweet potato, you can just buy one, but with normal potatoes, the little ones, you can only buy them in massive quantities. And Before I moved to Hurley, I lived in a flat on my own, and I thought I'd get some potatoes. And the only quantity I could get was a kilo of them, so I thought for a few days I'll just eat potatoes with every single meal I have. And that happened for about four or five days. And then I got a bit sick of them and I put them away in the cupboard. And to be honest, I forgot about them. And two or three weeks later, I was making a curry and I thought I'd put some potato in. 
And uh, so I open the cupboard door. And as I open it, this brown liquid pours off the shelf onto the counter. And it covers the, my microwave, covers a recipe book. And it was disgusting. It smelled awful. So I, I thought I'd investigate what the source of this liquid was. So I stand on my tiptoes and I look on the shelf. And what used to be a bag of potatoes had been changed into a bag of mush and more of this liquid. The whole shelf was just a swimming pool of this disgusting stuff. And why did this happen? Well, potatoes are known as a perishable food item. They go off, they die, they go all soft and mushy. And the reading that Finley brought to us from 1 Corinthians 15, Paul describes us as being perishable as well. We go off and we die. And despite Joe Wick's workouts in the mornings, I'm soft and mushy now, let alone in the future. We're perishable and we're mortal. The coronavirus has shown us just how vulnerable we are to death sting. Even if we're not high risk, we're still at risk. Our perishability has been exposed. And Paul quotes Isaiah in asking, Where, O death, is your sting? So far, 11,329 people have felt death sting through COVID-19. Just in the UK and just in hospitals, I read a figure this morning that suggested another 1,000 people have died in care homes. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? It's in our hospitals, it's in our cities, maybe in our towns. But let's try to forget about the coronavirus just for a few minutes so that things exist as well. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? It's in our relationship with God. We sin, we try and push God away and put distance between us. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? It's in our relationships with others. We use and hurt people for our own happiness and desires. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? It's in our relationship with creation. We fill the atmosphere with greenhouse gases that rip holes in the ozone layer and heat the earth. We fill the sea with plastic and waste. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? It's all around us if you look closely enough. And it's very easy to feel hopeless during this time. But we're reminded in the Easter story that we're called to more than hopelessness. We have hope, true hope, because Jesus died and because he rose again from the dead. The start of Luke 24 says that some of Jesus' followers came to the tomb, taking spices that they prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find a body. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. In chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about how Christ died, but rose again. Therefore, we will die, but rise again. This is our hope in this hopeless time, that because of Christ's death and resurrection, we too will be resurrected. Our death clothed with life, our perishability clothed with imperishability, our mortality clothed with immortality. On that day, through death, we will gain life. Death has been swallowed up in victory. We live in a strange time where death still stings despite Christ's victory. Maybe you've heard of the analogy of a, a snake being killed but still being venomous. One of my friends from South Africa told me about when he takes his youth group on weeks away, the leaders have to go down the day before with machetes to kill the snakes that are venomous around the area. They chop the head off and then they have to bury the head because the head's still venomous for a few days. Death is dead, but still venomous. Christ is won, but we wait for that final victory. The kingdom of God is here, but also not yet. So what do we do in this strange in-between time? Well, Paul answers this at the end of chapter 15. He says we're to remain steadfast and immovable to build our faith on the truth of the resurrection, to build our faith on solid grounds. We're called to a difficult task of being hopeful and remaining hopeful through our faith in the risen Jesus. Through this, our relationship with God is strengthened. But he also says that we're to always excel in the work for the Lord. We're to love our neighbour as ourselves, to protect and serve the vulnerable, to share our hope with the hopeless, to bring light to the darkness. And there's many ways of doing this. It might be ringing a friend or FaceTiming a friend who needs someone to talk to. It might be by doing someone shopping. 
being present despite the distance. Now I'd ask you to reflect on this throughout the coming day. I know that you've got enough time to be able to do it, so there's no excuses. We love others as we love ourselves. We don't put ourselves at risk of coronavirus, and so we shouldn't put others at risk either. We should be obeying government guidelines to practice social distancing, but to love people despite that. Death still stings, and of course it hurts when loved ones die, and mourning and grief are a very necessary part of that process. But we also long for the day where death won't have a sting, where it won't exist, where where it will be a long memory, a long distant memory. We long for the day when the risen Jesus returns to bring true life, eternal life. So there's a a prayer that that, uh, Mick started this stream with, and it's one of my favourite prayers of the entire year. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Tim. Let's close together in prayer. Father God, we pray that you would grant us your spirit to enable us to better live our lives as a resurrection people in the time of tension. Tension between the now, but also the not yet. Tension between the Christ has risen but also we will all be risen again in the final day well there are days as Tim pointed out that it's hard to know what it looks like to to live in that tension but I pray that you would enable us and even if it only looks like small works of goodness and kindness in times of darkness the light shines brightest And so help us just to be tiny flickers of light that in darkness we might shine for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you folks um, as you go back into your uh, routine of classes, studying and learning after a a little bit of a break. Uh, We'll be back on next Tuesday to worship together. Have a blessed day. Thank you.